We're gonna cover the ins and outs of the low bar back squat versus the high bar back squat. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from GarageStrength.com. And if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning about squatting, you wanna figure out how your legs can get stronger and how you can be more explosive, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a beast. So the never ending argument is low bar better than high bar. And it's typically gonna be power lifters and some old school strength and conditioning coaches over here. And then all the weightlifters and functional athletes or functional Olympic weightlifting coaches and athletes over here. What ends up happening is they just sort of scream at each other and argue about which movement is better, which movement is gonna make you a better squatter. But what we've gotta do is we've gotta take a step back out of our dogma that we love. You know, I'm a weightlifting coach, so I love the high bar. What is gonna help us the most with increasing our strength? What is gonna help us the most with increasing our hypertrophic gains or the size of our muscle? What's gonna help us the most with mobility? And then finally, what's gonna transfer best to specific sports that we're competing in? So if we can take that step back away from powerlifting, away from Olympic weightlifting, if I'm going to judge an exercise, it's gotta have those four keys. Again, it's gonna come down to strength, hypertrophy, transfer over to sport, and then mobility through various ranges of motion through various joints. And so when we start to break it down into that, we can really look deep into each specific exercise. In our case, low bar and high bar. So now that we got that out of the way, right? We have a decent understanding of what's gonna be the, the foundation, the groundwork for how we can actually analyze these movements. We gotta go over what those movements typically are. And so if we're gonna talk about the low bar, we've gotta think low bar, I usually like to grab a little bit, almost collar to collar, and right at the bottom of my rear delts, that's where I like to have that bar sit. Now, I low bar squatted for about 10 to 12 years of my career. When I was in college, I hit 600 for six, weighing a nice 290 pounds. I would typically always grab a slightly wider than shoulder width stance, so a little bit wider. And my whole key with low bar position, because I have longer legs, I'm typically a really good candidate for being excellent at the low bar for various reasons. One being, it's more of a hip dominant movement. So my thought was always, keep my knees just over the midfoot and then push my butt back here and then right as my hips got around 90 i'd come back up so the top of my quads might be parallel to the actual ground i like to just load that lower back and drive up and i believe that squatting low bar like this is part of what helped me deadlift so much with a relatively healthy lower back so it's think about from this perspective butt goes back here, get to that depth, boom, hips under. And that was one big cue I always liked was hips under. Butt back, load, hips under. So one of the key factors there is that you start to feel that in your hip extensors, okay? So you start to feel that in that lower back. You start to feel it in the groin and in the hamstrings. But that's where it's a little bit different from the high bar. One of the reasons why I stopped low barring is because I would get serious elbow pain in both of my elbows, I would have a little bit of shoulder pain. And over time, I got a tremendous amount of patellar tendon issues because I always was just stopping and grinding out from that bottom position. And I believe that my body can handle a high bar a little bit more effectively with a bounce. So when I would set up for a high bar, okay, so I'm going with a high bar, I like almost the same grip as where I'm gonna have like a bench press, a little bit wider than my clean grip. And I wanna get the bar just at the bottom of my neck at the top of my traps. Now, if we can think about here, I'm going a little bit more narrow with my stance. So high bars, my stance is gonna be a little bit more narrow than my low bar. I want my knees to break first. If you remember back to that low bar demonstration, my hips broke first. My knees will break and my hips will break almost at the exact same time. So I'm gonna go knees and hips back. I want my knees to travel forward. I'm gonna get nice and deep into the bottom position, keep my chest up and drive straight out of the hole. So one of the issues I've had personally, because I am a longer limbed athlete, my legs are quite long compared to my torso, is that I tend to rock forward, but I also think that's from a lot of low bar squat. I tend to do like almost like a ugly good morning squat. So my knees, Forward, 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 butt goes back. Drive through your full foot with that chest staying up. 
So here, what we end up seeing, boom, is that high bar squat is gonna force you to keep that gut a little bit more upright, that back a little bit stiffer. You're gonna have to have a little bit more mobility in your ankles, and you're gonna have to have a little bit more mobility in your lower back, and also, you're gonna have to build up a ton of quad strength. The reason why my quads are actually small is because I low barred for so long. But those are the two differences there. I like the high bar rack position a little bit better because it doesn't beat up my elbows as much relative to that low bar. Now that we went over what is needed, how we judge these exercises, and then how to actually execute those exercises, which one's better, right? Which, which one should you be utilizing more often? And so let's start off right off the bat with that strength-based component. One of the big key factors behind the low bar is that if my whole purpose is to move as much weight as possible at a decent depth, around 90 degrees, or slightly, ideally slightly lower than 90 degrees, if you're in a good, powerlifting federation, you've got to squat to 90 degrees or slightly below 90 degrees. But if the whole purpose is to move as much weight as possible, the low bar is the winner. You're going to low bar a lot more weight typically because the depth isn't as deep as a high bar is gonna be and it's going to be recruiting a ton from that posterior chain. The high bar will as well, but even further when you're doing that hip base squat with the low bar component. So if that's the sole purpose, go with the low bar. Now, does that mean if we're talking about sport-based transfer that the low bar is the winner because we're lifting more weight? Not necessarily. That's one big key concept that we've got to recognize is that a lot of coaches have this misconception that we have to lift as much weight as possible for us to be the best possible athletes, for us to coordinate as rapidly as we possibly can. And that's simply not the factor. I believe the heavier the weights that you can lift while moving them quickly, that's what's gonna transfer the best. And that's where the high bar comes into play is that the high bar transfers really well to the clean, really well to the snatch, really well to reflexive movements, really well to all these different exercises that are very much related to high rates of coordination. And on top of that, it tends to be a bit more quad dominant. So most sports are based around acceleration. They're based around cutting rapidly, your knee's gonna track forward, your knee's gonna get in front of your toes, and so you have to get out of a cut potentially, and you have to accelerate really, really quickly. And we know for a fact that acceleration is based around quad strength. So if we've got a steep shin angle and our quads are very strong, we're gonna be able to accelerate faster. So from a sporting perspective, from a sport-based transfer, that high bar is going to be victorious when we're comparing it to the low bar. On top of that, the low bar can really beat up a lot of athletes that have a longer torso. It can destroy their lower back. Now, finally, another thing, if we're bringing in mobility. If I'm squatting full range of motion here, I have to have mobile hips. I have to have mobile ankle joint. I have to have an upright torso. My thoracic spine has to extend. That's gonna help me from a mobility perspective. If I'm squatting low bar, I do have to have mobile shoulders, my ankles don't really have to be overly mobile. And that can end up leading to injuries elsewhere. Like I mentioned earlier, I struggled a lot with patellar tendon issues. I also struggled a lot when I was low bar squatting quite a bit in hip problems. I had a ton of IT band issues here and that tends to be the theme with low bar squatters that aren't squatting full range of motion is they end up having really, really tight IT bands and a serious amount of knee pain because they don't have really good ankle mobility, okay? And for other various reasons. So, mobility perspective, high bar wins. Sport transfer, high bar wins. Strength-based, low bar wins. Now, hypertrophy, which one's gonna gain more muscle mass? This tends to be a if this, then that type situation. If you struggle with hypertrophy in your hamstrings, and you struggle with hypertrophy in your groin or anything along those lines, I typically would say train low bar as a warm up, then transition over to high bar to finish out that squat workout. If I have a thrower who, when they're sweeping, they might have some groin issues in here as they're sweeping to the middle, they're doing a rotational movement, or they're a glider. I might have them do really low bar movements to loosen up here, 
and then that's gonna help loosen up their groin so that when they get into the circle, they feel more effective. But from a hypertrophic perspective, if we can think about full range of motion here, lengthening is strengthening. The longer I can make my muscles, so the more flexion I get in my hamstrings, or the more flexion I get in my knees, the more flexion I get in my hips, the more tension gets placed onto my muscles, the more muscular damage there might be, the more mechanical load there is, the high bar back squat is going to be victorious when we're talking about hypertrophic gains. If you look at the best Olympic weightlifters in the world, if you look at the best female CrossFitters, female Olympic weightlifters, they high bar all the time and their quads are massive because they're doing high bar squats. So if you are looking for hypertrophic gains in your erectors, hypertrophic gains in your quads, and even to a point it will help your hamstrings, then you need to go with the high bar back squat. Typically, I will say the high bar is always going to be the absolute best movement. I'm not saying the low bar sucks. I'm saying it does not transfer as well to other sports. A lot of my sport-based carryover and understanding of the high bar comes from, to be fair, is anecdotal evidence training athletes, world-class athletes in five different sports here on site at Garage Strength, but also from skimming through research, from understanding research, and from spending time with one of the greatest exercise scientists of all time, Dr. John Garhammer. So, Dr. Garhammer is actually from my hometown, and fortunately, I've been able to sit down and talk to him about training, and he even has said, look, the high bar back squat is clearly much more beneficial when we're talking about transfer of training over to those different sporting realms. This, this one's for my powerlifting friends, low bar back squat or, or high bar back squat. Well, for powerlifting, right back to specificity, if you, what you want to do is the, the greatest weight you can for a passable squat, <laughs> yeah. low bar probably works well for most people. But if you're using the squat for uh, sports training for other sports than powerlifting, I think the high bar squat that Olympic lifters primarily use is the better way to go. If you need help with your squat based training, your squat sucks and you want to blow up your high bar back squat, click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com and pick up our big squat program. If you want more information around squat based training or powerlifting based training, click on this card right here. Until next time guys, peace.